Delaware wanted to put a band together, Jeff Simon, and he, he, he was very into the blues. And he booked a gig without me knowing it. And I didn't even own an electric guitar. So there was another cat in town that was, the 125 was in a hawk shop and had been there for years and everybody was looking at it. Now, I looked at it too, but I came back to town and it was still there. So it was like destiny, nobody had bought it. And it was way, way, way up the highest in a, in a hawk shop. So nobody would steal it. You know, the cheap stuff's on the floor. <laughs> the good stuff's up top. Cheap, it was 200 bucks which is all the money I had to, in the world. I had to scrape that together. So, and when I picked it up and played it, I was just, it was just a miracle because I said, wow, this is the guitar for me. Because we are in Nashville, right? Is this considered Nashville out here? Yeah. It's all Nashville, all right? Nashville, yeah. I left my home up on the rural route. I told my pappy I was getting out and get the honky tonk blues. Get a honky tonk blues. Lord, I got em. I got the honky tonk blues. I didn't really know the history of Epiphone. I didn't. I wasn't educated on on your company. I, I always thought Epiphone was like the minor leagues of Gibson. I didn't know it was the other way around. I thought, well, no, that's going back a step. And they said you have to try. So I said, all right, I'll try. And I, I played them, and I, I was going. Well, it's a bit heavier than I'm used to, and the neck's thicker. You know, it's wider, thicker this way, it's this, that, and they said, we'll work on that. So they started working on it, and then finally, I said, gee, I don't know about these Epiphones. I don't, I don't know if they're working out for me, and they laughed. They said, you know those last three shows you did, the two shows you did in uh, Oregon, the one in Washington? I said, yeah, and they said, did you like those shows? And I said, yeah, I thought they were good shows. He said, the crowd really dug you, and I was like, well, thanks. And he said, you didn't know it, but you were using those guitars that night. We just didn't tell you. So I had already, then I was committed. I'm a steady roller, man. And I robo night and day. I'm a steady roller, man. And I robo night and day. I ain't got no woman. Woo hoo, to be rolling this away. So here's what happened to me in 1971. I went to see the Muddy Waters Blues Band and they went out and played without Muddy Waters a couple of songs. And I was sitting right about where you are right now. And he walked out on the stage and he sits down on a stool and the cats behind him have been playing. All of a sudden they looked about 15 years younger you dig? Because <laughs> it was muddy water sitting on there. And he puts this copper slide on his finger and he sits down. Well, 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 with that voice of his, doesn't need a mic, you know. Without a band playing behind him, he plays it. Woke up this morning, go around for my shoe. Lord, I had to walk in blues. He played Walk in Blues by Robert Johnson, alone. What a slide. And I was sitting there and I said, well, that's it. You're never getting any closer to it than that. Right there. You got the whole package. Muddy Waters doing Robert Johnson. Now, well, nothing more needs to be said. This is more like a semi-acoustic guitar. You know, that's what they were called in like 1970 when you bought them, when you bought these, um, you know, Epiphone guitars like John Lee Hooker's. That's why a lot of cats who were blues cats, they all started on acoustic, as I did. So there's an arch top to it. The strings are elevated off the, off the body so you're not hitting the, the thing all the time when you're picking it. So I was having to find something that was right in between, right in between uh, the sound of an electric guitar but the, 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 the physics of the acoustic. I had to have that match up and the 125 was the only one who gave me that. But as I said, they got old. Time went on and time went on and uh, you know, sometimes the horse just has run its last lap. So they brought these studs in. <laughs> and I've been more than happy. I've been, uh, in fact, now that I, I can't wait to get to the gig. Whereas before I'd be backstage beating on my guitar, going to the sound checks, trying to get, just trying to get my head above water. Whereas these, it's like a, it's like a thoroughbred horse that I'm holding back on. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the way it should be. Uh, you, you should have more to work with than less. Um, that's when it gets fun. And I think I deserve a little fun at this point. Ha <laughs> ha.
I went to a dance and I wore out my shoes. Woke up this morning wishing I could lose the jumping honky tonk blues. Get a honky tonk blues. Lord, I've got them. I got the honky tonk blues. So am I good or am I good, huh? Yeah, huh? Say on camera? Now, Paul, remember this. Most of what I told you is true. 